Signs that North Korea may be backing off from an international showdown. This on the heels of that country's first nuclear test earlier this month. Lawrence Korb is a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, also former Assistant Secretary of Defense in the Reagan administration, and a good friend to us. Good morning to you, Larry. Good morning, Alex. South Korean paper reported that Kim Jong-il was sorry for his country's nuclear test. U.S. State Department officials have uh, somewhat discounted those reports. But what do you make of this? And do you think it's a sign that Kim Jong-il is at least willing to cooperate with the U.S. and the U.N.? Well, what happened was after the UN passed the uh, sanctions bill, Kim Jong-il said he's going to have a second nuclear test. Really annoyed the Chinese because the Chinese do not want to see Japan or South Korea getting nuclear weapons. And I think they said, look, enough is enough. We're really going to tighten the screws on you in terms of giving you uh, fuel and food if you don't back off. So what he did, he said, okay, I won't do a second test. But the fact of the matter is he did his first test, which is really what he wanted. And so now it looks like he's, quote, unquote, a reasonable person by agreeing not to do a second test. Do you believe him that he won't do a second test? Uh, I think he was probably a lot of talk because the first test didn't go that well but basically he has a very weak hand that he's played it very well because there's a country that can't do very much at all except in the military realm you know he tried to have the missile test this summer that didn't work too well the nuclear test really was kind of a half-baked type of operation but the fact of the matter is he's got everybody's attention and by not having a second test he's basically looking reasonable the key question now is whether he'll come back to the bargaining table which is what the Chinese want him to do yeah there's a, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen before he would do so among them North Korea is demanding that the US lift the financial restriction on the country that's a condition he says to return the disarmament talks but Washington is saying you know if these sanctions are not going to be lifted so is this something that could cause the uh, crisis to escalate even further well no I don't think so I think what it will do is it will just sort of drift now because uh, until you come back to the talks, nothing much is going to happen. But as long as he doesn't do anything like more missile tests or a uh, nuclear explosion, uh, the Chinese and the South Koreans will feel, okay, we've got this under control now, at least, at least for, the, for the time being. Look, at some point, we, the United States, are going to have to sit down and talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. I know Secretary Rice said we won't do, we won't do that. But, you know, former Secretary Baker, who's now heading this Iraq study group, you know, came out and said, look, there's nothing wrong with negotiating with your enemies. It's not a sign of weakness. Now, whether this administration does it or the next, at some point, we're going to have to sit down with them. And until we do, this whole mess is not going to be resolved. Well, you talked about Secretary Rice uh, mentioning, you know, we're not interested in just two-party talks. But she does say that the U.S. would be willing to return to the six-party talks. However, without agreeing to any of the conditions set forth by North Korea, do you see a return to six-party talks happening anytime soon? Not anytime soon, but uh, eventually they will happen, at, and at some point the United States will indicate one way or another that it's willing to talk to the to the North Koreans. Possibly within the six-party party talks, we'll talk to them, uh, talk to them directly. You see, the, the North Koreans basically see us as the problem. Uh, they, because they're so isolated, they have an exaggerated view of what the United States is up to, and they they think we're out to overthrow the uh, overthrow the regime, and at some point we're going to have to have to conf have to confront that. Condoleezza Rice was in Beijing this week. She's now heading off to Russia. But how important do you think China's role overall is in this conflict? How influential, both in terms of North Korean influence and and how loyal an ally may, might they be to to the U.S. Well, China, like any other nation, will pursue its uh, own interests. At the present time, their interests and ours coincide because the Chinese do not want to see South Korea or particularly Japan get nuclear weapons. Now, Secretary Rice, when she went over there, first went to Japan and they agreed, well, we're not going to go nuclear at this time. And I think that was good for the Chinese. And so they were willing then to lean more on the on the North Koreans. And they basically have stopped some of the uh, uh, supplies going into North Korea. They've also tightened the financial sanctions uh, somewhat. So right now, we and the Chinese are working together. But what the Chinese won't do that we want is to interdict supplies at sea because what we're really concerned about is that North Korea would give the technology or the material uh, to a, a rogue regime like Iran or to a group like Al Qaeda. Okay, Lawrence Carb, Larry, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so nice much. Nice to be with you, Alex. Still to come, we have a record set.